Hello, friends. Today we're reading Winter Candle by Jerome Ashford. In this story, lots of different families work together to help each other celebrate their holidays. Winter Candle. Nana Clover checked her list. Turkey, in the oven. Potatoes, peeled. Napkins, folded, just so. But candles, how could she have forgotten? Thanksgiving at 3C Juniper Court without candles? Unheard of. Down she padded three flights to the super. Candles, Nana C? asked Trevor. He opened a drawer and handed her a lumpy stick of wax. It's not pretty, but it will burn. Nana Clover spread some pine cones and leaves around the frumpy candle. By the time her Thanksgiving guests arrived, the centerpiece glowed. Two weeks later, apartment 2G was in an uproar. The Havdala candle's not here, Nat, Nat yelled from the closet. In the kitchen, Mom sighed. I forgot to buy a new one. Avi's lip quivered, but the stores will be out soon. Shh, shh, it's not the end of the world, Grandpa told the dancing good children. Avi, go ask a neighbor for a candle. Up, Avi clattered and rapped on Nana Clover's door, and down he jumped with the bumpy, drooping candle. Avi's brothers stared. That's not a Havdala candle, Sam groaned. It's not braided. It only has one wick, Nat complained. It's not pretty, agreed Grandpa, but a candle is blessed by what it does, not by how it looks. It will still shine. And shine it did as Mom raised it high. Grandpa said the blessing to end the Sabbath. Avi held, the, held his hands to the light. They'd never, held a, they'd never had a Havdala candle that burned so bright. Four mornings later, it was 4D's turn for disaster. It's broken, Kirsten wailed. Liv came running. One, two, three, four candles on the St. Lucia crown, and the fifth one was snapped in two pieces. Our cousins will be here any minute, said Kristen. How can I be St. Lucia with only four candles? Liv started to cry. No St. Lucia crown and no special St. Lucia breakfast. Who can they ask for help? Girls, we have plenty of time, Mom reassured them. Kirsten, go ask a neighbor for another candle. Down Kirsten dashed two flights to the Danzingers and came back with the funniest looking candle the girls had ever seen. Everyone will laugh at me, moped Kirsten. But nobody laughed because as Kirsten carried in the teapot and St. Lucia buns, the funny looking candle gleamed as brightly as the star of Bethlehem. Winter came, snow fell, and presents were exchanged. The new year began, and in apartment 5A, it began with calamity. They're having trouble too. What do you think they forgot in apartment 5A? Jamila's got something in her mouth, Dante hollered, and I don't think it's food. Dad scooped up the baby and stuck his finger in her mouth. It was a piece of wax and a bit of string. I think she ate the candle. Oh no, Dante howled. Jamila ate the faith candle for the canola. Go see if the Ericsons have one, his sister Monet suggested. Down the stairs, Dante plodded and knocked on the door. You're lucky we still have this one, Kirsten said. Remember, it was from her St. Lucia crown. She handed him the bedraggled little candle. That means it's tired. But Dante didn't feel lucky. How could they talk about faith with that sorry thing? And it wasn't even the right color for the Kwanzaa. But when Dad lit the snubby candle, the flame leapt and danced, inviting the other six candles to do the same on their canola. A few days later came the biggest snowstorm of the season. Snow blanketed the front steps and made drifts on the windowsills. Then, just after nightfall, the electricity went out. Flashlight beams flickered in few windows. In 5B, the newest family at Juniper Court huddled together in the dark. Their clothes were still in suitcases, their dishes were still in boxes, and Papa was somewhere in the city with a moving truck full of furniture. How will Papa find us, Nazreen asked. The street lights are out. Papa won't be able to find us, called her brother Farouk. There's too much snow. Of course he will find us, Mama said. Nazreen, go next door and ask the neighbors, the neighbors for a candle. 
We'll put it in the window to light Papa's way. Next door, Dante scratched his head. I think there's one left from Kwanzaa, he told Nazreen. He returned with a lump of wax that looked like a fairy tale troll. The candle's so short now. Do you still think it will burn? Let's see. Nazreen, Nazreen's mother lit the candle and set it on the windowsill. How is Papa going to see one candle in such a big city, Farouk asked. But as they watched, the flame shimmered and grew. It glittered on the falling snowflakes until the dark street seemed spun with stars. Many blocks away, Papa steered the big truck through snow-covered streets. What did that sign say? Pine Street? Vine Street? Will he be able to find his family? But then Papa noticed the glow up ahead. Maybe someone there could give him directions. What do you think is glowing? Papa steered left, then right, then left, closer and closer to the glowing light. Papa turned a corner and gasped. There in front of him, five floors up, shone a warm, welcoming light. He was home. Papa climbed three floors, four floors, five floors, and then Papa's here. Nazreen and Farouk flew down the hall and into their father's arms. Come see our new house, Papa, cried Nazreen. And look, everyone else is coming too. The little apartment filled with neighbors. Dante's family brought chairs and a folding table. Nana Clover made a bed out of blankets for Nazreen and Farouk. Trev brought a small heater. The Erickson girls and their mother made sandwiches. And the Danzingers put a pot of soup to warm on the camping stove. Everyone welcomed Nazreen and Farouk and Mama and Papa to their new home. And everybody helped each other celebrate their holidays. They celebrated Kwanzaa and Hanukkah and Christmas all together. And the gnarled little candle glowed so brightly in the window that when the electricity finally did come back on, no one even noticed. The end. I hope you enjoyed the story, friends. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye and happy holidays.